hey, I would send more shower thoughts. So, how many sides does a piece of paper have? Four. I'll give you a second. Two? No. It's actually six. You don't realize it until you start stacking it. How is that? A piece of paper is a rectangle. One, two, three, four. Unless he's counting the faces, front and back, but... Okay. Well, now I'll look it up. But I have a feeling that I'm going to type that into Google, press search, and it's going to be one of those ones where I find articles and videos and forums worth of people arguing four and six. <laughs> Equally convinced. It's not the hill that I would die on. It's not going to affect my life either way, but I'm going to say four. Yeah, final answer. So we'll let the comment section battle that one out. There's a lot of things in life that take us by surprise. A lot of things that aren't really as they seem. Like four. elephants being herbivores. They'd be a lot more scary if they were carnivores. Your parents told you not to talk to strangers. Yet, here we are. When you're talking or conversing with someone online, a lot of times you don't really know that much about them. The nice thing about not knowing anyone's age on the internet is that you can pretty much get in an argument with an eight-year-old and leave feeling superior. Mm. That One of the best reasons of why not to engage in arguments on the internet. Well, one of the many reasons. Now I'm curious as to how many strangers the average person speaks to a day. And I guess that number is going to vary depending on your job. But, I mean, I speak to a server, some of my neighbors I don't know, the person who sells you fruit. I know the person who sells me fruit, though. You know, there's actually a guy who sells poems in the park near my house. And one day he came up to me to sell me a poem, but I wasn't interested, so I said, no, thank you. And it started this conversation between us about poetry and literature and ended with us... 40 minutes later, speaking about the Pink Floyd Uma Guma album. And now we exchange music to speak about for the next time. And I kind of look forward to speaking to him. We're such an unlikely pair, but we have a lot of similar tastes. So yeah, sometimes strangers are just, how would I say that? Untapped friends. <laughs> that sounded kind of weird. But not all strangers have good intentions, so that wasn't advice, just an anecdote. Talk to strangers at your own discretion. Tone and boost can be exactly what you need some days. Yeah. A lot of us could use a boost of those happy chemicals to make our lives a lot easier. When you experience depression, your brain refuses to produce, let's call it, a happy hormone as a reward for your brain cells doing what they're supposed to do. And as a result, your cells go on strike refusing to work for no pay, and the whole system comes crashing down, benefiting absolutely nobody involved. Sounds strikingly familiar. History Bad repeats. Joke. And speaking of history, it must have been really awkward being the first historian to have ever existed. I can just imagine that conversation happening. It's like, so, what are you doing? Just writing down everything that's been happening. Why? I think but it's a good idea. But the way idea. we view history is now changing. At some point, the internet will be older than all humans alive, and future generations will have tons of high-quality video footage of so many extinct animals, old civilizations, and where Santa used to live before the Arctic melted and disappeared. Do you remember when the iPhone 6 first came out, and the camera quality then was just so crisp? I'm just like, whoa, amazing, revolutionary. And now, last week, Apple released their 15th generation iPhone. And the camera quality is amazing. And if you, well, not too different from the 14, but like. But then, if you go back and look at a picture from an iPhone 6, you think the quality is bad, comparatively. And will Apple be around in a hundred years? I don't know. But at this rate, if we continue at this pace, it's so curious to think about how future generations will look at our iPhone, I, <laughs> what? Our iPhone 15 quality and see it how I look at, I don't know, video taken on a 
90s camcorder or a Super 8 going further back. It still would have been cool to look at footage from the time where woolly mammoths were running wilds, even if it would be pixelated. That might make you feel like an old doomer. But remember, the number of people older than you never increases. It only decreases. It's like a lifelong race to be ranked number one. Except the prize for winning is just Dying. death. <laughs> and out of the billions of people who have ever lived, just one of them suffered the most agonizing death of us all. So far. But maybe that happened hundreds of years ago. Until trains were invented in 1804, every human who ever lived that experienced a speed upwards of 56 miles per hour was falling to their death. Normally, the floor is what stops gravity from killing us. But if we get too far away from it, gravity uses the floor to kill us. I don't think gravity cares, anthropomorphizing gravity. But when he said that only one person has died in the most agonizing way, that's not exactly how he said it, but I thought about how interestingly subjective that is, right? Because burning alive, that seems agonizing. So does, uh, what's another horrible way to go? Being dragged behind the back of a car or being melted by sulfuric acid. Those are all objectively bad, but which is worse? I don't know. I mean, you might have a different opinion than me. I personally wouldn't say any which one is worse. Huh. What do you think is the worst way to die? That's a morbid question. Life is short, so they say. But life is only short if you love your life. Otherwise, it is very, very painfully long. It's like playing a game. In this case, It'd be more painful to lose the game by one point than by a hundred points. You know what I mean? Yeah. But enough with being morbid. Good dreams are basically a free trial of a life you could have been living. But in a way, if there are an infinite number of universes, then our dreams aren't actually dreams. They're clips and previews from another universe that we can see into. But our universe isn't so bad. Being able to go to sleep without worrying that you'll get eaten by some random animal is probably the most privileged thing about our modern world. It wasn't always like that, so we should really appreciate it. We don't really appreciate a lot of free things in life, like taking your health for granted all the time. Until you're sick, only then do you actually care. Totally. Oh, and email. Do you ever get so sick with a cold or a flu? that you forget what it felt like to be healthy. When swallowing water feels like you're swallowing glass and you don't remember what life was like before that feeling. <laughs> I related to that one. We take our own planet for granted almost daily. National parks are a perpetual reminder of what the world would look like if it weren't for humans. Ironic how we enjoy them so much, isn't it? I just blinked and most of the time, we barely even notice how often we blink. Characters in first-person video games never blink, if you think about it. It doesn't feel like much. It's just one of those manual processes that our bodies do for us that we just forget about. We really take for granted how smooth the insides of our eyelids are. Imagine if they were like sandpaper. Us humans can barely live with one another without trying to kill each other. So the fact that people can convince themselves that meeting aliens would go smoothly is nothing short of pure hopium. hopium. If they got upset with us, they'd just throw another one of those big rocks at Earth and we'd be toast. And speaking of big rocks, the asteroid that ended the dinosaurs reign on Earth was technically the highest ratio of killing birds to one stone in Earth's history. From all the life on land to all the life in Earth's oceans, 99% of everything was wiped out in an instant we are part of that remaining 1%. I like that quote so much, I put it on a hoodie. You can get it here. Uh, okay. Still, the deep ocean is terrifying. People will swim in ocean at the beaches, even though there are definitely many corpses in it. People will not swim in a pool with a corpse in it though. So therefore, as weird as it sounds, humans all have a corpse to water ratio that is acceptable for them to swim in. You can see why people don't like oceans now, huh? Water makes fabric a darker shade even though water is clear. I guess I probably should have taken my clothes off before I got in the shower. Anyway, 
After I shower, I normally brush my teeth, and I'm super grateful to be able to do that. Most animals have never seen their own teeth, let alone be able to clean them. As much as you'd like to believe it, wisdom teeth aren't useless. They're actually the reason some oral surgeons are able to make a living. It's quite the career. It's weird. We choose our careers when we're worst informed about what they're actually like. Yes. Some people will work the same job for their entire life, wondering what life could have been like if they had taken a slightly different path. Who knows? You could have ended up like Jeff Bezos and had more money than brain cells. Literally. Oh, 200 billion is a massive number. There's a certain point in everyone's life where how high can you count changes from a matter of knowledge to a matter of will. And I wouldn't attempt this one. Counting to 200 billion would take you over 6,000 years. Our brains just aren't capable of even comprehending things that large. It's strong, but not the strongest. Yes, the brain did indeed name itself, but it also recognized that it named itself and was surprised when it realized that. So are we actually as smart as we think we are? We can't see into the future. Unfortunately, we aren't psychic. But always remember, psychics that don't accept walk-in appointments aren't real psychics. They'd be expecting them. I just them. don't buy into psychics. I don't know. I think it's formulaic. I think they rely a lot on context clues. And if you're sitting in front of them, those non-verbal cues that you give them. And sometimes they ask you questions before you go, and I think they rely heavily on that too. Hotly debated topic, but not for me. They'd be expecting them, right? But although we can't see the future, we do remember the important events that happened in our lives in the past. Some stranger somewhere still remembers you because you were kind to them when no one else was. You've made an impact in their life. You made them feel something no one else could. However, almost universally, you can instantaneously stress out any person just by shouting, Hey, catch. Stay ready. That was uncalled for, <laughs> okay. and I'm sorry for that. Getting hit in the face by a ball at that speed would most definitely have you in the hospital. The hospital is simultaneously the building where most people leave without entering, and also the building where most people enter without leaving. We're born against our will. We also die against our will. Some but regardless, people. we're here. We're alive. Kids don't really enjoy sleeping. It's always seemed like a hassle to get them to finally go down. It's probably because they haven't gotten bored of life yet. They're young and may be here against their will, but there's still so much to see, so much to do. Kids are all different, but they all have one thing in common. They're brutally honest. The easiest way to tell if you're obese is to ask a kid to draw you. If they draw your stick figure with a line for the body, you're probably fine. However, if they draw you with a circle, I got some bad news for you. You can be underweight, or you can be overweight, but you can't be weight. Some of these are ridiculous. We all change as we age. We grow and we mature. This can be seen in many ways. There was a moment where your mom or dad picked you up as a baby and put you down, only to never pick you up again. You got big. You grew up. If you're still decently young, the odds are that you still haven't met the majority of people who you'll befriend in life. And those are the same people who will inevitably be at your funeral when the lights go out one last time. As sad as it sounds, most guys will receive their first bunch of flowers at their funeral. Go buy your friend a flower, I'm sure he'll appreciate it. If you happen to be older, however, and you go to college at an old enough age, the odds of you taking a history class that are simply life events you experienced is actually quite high. If you happen to be in English class, however, I wish you the best of luck. I understand how English can be difficult to learn, I've always said this. Though only one letter apart, creation and cremation are two very opposite things. Anytime we watch a video where someone mentions that English might be a difficult language to learn, it starts a war in the comments. You've got people who say it's the easiest language to learn, and then some of those comments will have small grammar mistakes, it never fails. And then you're going to have the people who found it quite difficult. But after reading a lot of those conversations, I really just think it depends on your base language. 
and other factors, but mostly your native language. Just how they say that Dutch is the easiest language for English speakers to learn, native English speakers. And if you speak Portuguese, maybe Spanish would be very easy for you to learn. And if you speak Japanese, English might be a bit different. The script is different. Phonetically, there are more vowels and consonants. So, yeah. We'll see what people say. I don't know what is the most difficult, but now I will look to see if any study has been conducted to find the objectively easiest language to learn. I don't know how they would figure that out though. We'll see. And somehow the old you is actually your younger self. It can sometimes seem like it's completely backwards. It reminds me of passwords. Passwords have probably stopped more people from getting into their own accounts way. than hackers, having the opposite effect that it was intended to have. Protecting your belongings is important, even if you're protecting yourself from you, apparently. Funny enough, there are locks in a police locker room to prevent theft. These are the people we call when our houses get broken into, and yet they can't even stop themselves from stealing from each other. If a cop gets caught stealing, does he by law, have to arrest himself? Probably a colleague. Hopefully they'd be on house arrest, because people who were sentenced to house arrest in 2020 really lucked out timing-wise. Because we all were too. Luck would have been on your side. And for most, luck is hard to come by. Gambling is only considered an addiction if you're bad at it. Otherwise, you're considered a lucky degenerate. At least you're rich, though. Yes. I actually wonder that. Where is that really fine line? Dana White's a good example of that for me. He's so good at gambling that he's banned from gambling at certain casinos. But to get that good, you have to do a lot of gambling. And he's successful at it. And he has enough money to do it. Also, nothing against him. That was just an example. Or professional poker players. I watched this poker live stream. It's called Live at the Bike. If you like poker and you haven't seen that, I'll link the stream for you. It's interesting, but I wonder where is that line where it stops becoming a game or a job and starts becoming an addiction? And I guess it's just not mutually exclusive. It can be a game and a job and also be an addiction. Just like not everyone who drinks is an alcoholic. Not everyone who gambles excessively is an addict, but... Yeah, these are just things I think about on my spare time. But if someone tells you you look like a million bucks, don't get an ego. It's less and less of a compliment every year because of inflation. Regardless, plenty of people have struck it rich based purely off of coincidence and luck. The lottery. Sometimes it doesn't take that much. A lot of Google's revenue comes from people that are just too lazy to type .com after the end of their search. Coincidences can either make us look really, really good or really, really bad. For example, a guy walking around with one crowbar is a lot more suspicious than a guy walking around with three crowbars. School zones have a very specific speed that you need to be driving at. Drive too slow and you're really creepy, but drive too fast and you start wondering why the speed bumps are screaming. Oh, dark. <laughs> okay, sorry. That was a pretty distasteful joke. It's a guilty pleasure. We all have guilty pleasures, but to be honest, every pleasure is a guilty pleasure if you're anxious enough. Anxiety sucks. We've all experienced it at some point or another, and it can really get in the way of so many things in life. Do you guys have any guilty pleasures? I just call them pleasures. I don't know. Eating a whole pizza by myself? Pleasure. I actually did recently meet someone who was drinking a bottle of coke and put whole milk in it i'd feel some guilt with that if i were doing it <laughs> your work your free time even your relationships it doesn't matter how many fish there are in the sea if you don't know how to fish you know the night before you have a day off is like a hundred times better than the actual day off itself because you're already worrying about the next day when you have to go back anxiety gets in the way of everything but no matter how anxious or lonely you get, just know that somewhere out there, there's a lonely piece of paper that's been in the same printer tray for years and years on end. 
simply because new paper is always loaded on top of it before the rest runs out. Everyone and everything has a purpose. Except that piece of paper. So don't let it get you down. You've survived every battle you've gone through. You're undefeated. In the end though, we're all losers in the race of time. Time is limited, so make the most of it. Me personally, I'll be seeing if I can make a slinky go down an escalator forever. It might be a waste of time. <laughs> Actually, it is a waste of time. But I'll be happy. And that's all that matters. I think. Alright. <laughs> I like when he ends it on a good note. So this video is from a channel called Aperture. I'll make sure to link both the video and the channel down below. He has other videos like this. But then he also has philosophy and thought paradoxes. It's a good channel. I like it. Leave your shower thoughts down below. It's not for everybody. Not everyone likes these shower thought videos. I honestly do. I like touching on a lot of subjects in a short span of time. So if you have any more, send them over. For a literary recommendation today, Despite the fact that there were so many subjects, there's nothing that I can think of that goes directly to anything he spoke of without giving you a poker book. Um, I'll just tell you what I'm reading right now. Okay, I'm reading one of the Missing 411 books by David Politis. <sighs> Some might call that a guilty pleasure. For me, it's just a pleasure again. David Politis, you can, you know, make your own opinion on him, but he's just a really compelling writer. All of his books are page turners for me. Missing 411 is this phenomenon of people who go missing under mysterious circumstances in national parks and forests. And I actually heard of David Politis through watching a Mr. Ballin episode. And it turns out Mr. Ballin covered a lot of these stories. But if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious and story format, Mr. Ballin is for you. So I'll make sure to link Mr. Ballin covering Missing 411 in case you want a, an appetizer, a taste of what it's like before looking into the books. And then I'll also link David Politis's YouTube channel. I know he has one, but I've, I've never really watched it, to be honest with you. So if you have any book recommendations you want to give to each other, feel free to do that. Other than that, though, that's about it from me. So thank you for watching with me, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.